many of you have a melungeon bump on the back of your head? Well, I was totally intrigued. It's totally shocked me. Um, I actually had a dentist ask me about this. And the bottom part of the tooth, it's almost like there's a ridge. Hi, I'm Danielle Romero. Thanks so much for being with me here again on my channel where we have been digging into American ancestry, uh, hidden family stories, and how that stuff connects. And yesterday I released a video that I was really excited about. I was talking a little bit about the Melungeon red bone stories. And I'm so excited that so many of you enjoyed that too. And we're gonna be doing a little bit of a deep dive into that ancestry in the next coming weeks. And I'm really excited. I reached out to the president of the Melungeon Heritage Association, which was surprisingly here in Tennessee. I live in Nashville and she agreed to talk with me and I have some really other great interviews. Just, I'm really excited to, to dive into. But before we start talking to those people, I wanted to do a little bit of just a intro. Um, I have a lot of questions about what Melungeon means, what red bone means. And like I, I've said so many times, I have Creole ancestry, but when I re started researching one side of my family, there was a last name that came up. And of course I had to Google it. Um, and it's Goins. And that's G-O-I-N-S is what's typically, uh, how it's typically spelled. And it is my third great grandmother. And that side of the family, I did a whole video on, and I'll link to it below. Basically, they were on the Choctaw rolls. Um, they were you know, on the Dawes rolls. They were living in Indian territory. They were censused as Choctaw for a long time. And then they got kicked out of the tribe. Then they were put back on the tribe. Then they got kicked off again. And what I'm understanding is that Goins is a very, very common Melungeon Redbone last name. And so I'm like particularly interested in learning a little bit about this. Now, before we do uh, some of the like real deep dives, I wanted to share an article I found with you that was so fascinating to me. And it's about Melungeon physical traits. Now, what's interesting about like the Melungeon and Redbone and Creole is that it's these these groups that are being considered kind of like separate, but in, in many regards, they're very similar to these other tri-racial groups. Um, it reminds me a little bit of, of my husband. He has Puerto Rican ancestry. His grandmother was born in Puerto Rico. And sometimes we laugh about, you know, my kids will joke with me and they'll be like, we're all Puerto Rican and you're not. And it's like, but I'm Creole. And it's like basically the same thing. Not culturally, but when we're talking about these tri-racial groups, I think it's really interesting to see uh, some of the overlap between them. But there are a lot of differences. And so this article was really cool. Um, I'm gonna share it with you and let's talk about it. So let's hop over there. Okay, so before we start getting all of this, um, I just want to put something out there because um, I had a couple of people ask uh, if we should do a live stream, which I've never done. I think it's like a live chat where it's just like a video like this, except there's a chat on the side and we can talk. Um, and that might be really fun. So let me know what you think about that. Uh, I've never tried it before, but I think it might be a fun way to hang. All right, so. This article is from Family Tree and it's kind of old, but the way I found it was I was kind of looking around at Melungeon stuff, getting ready for these interviews, and there was a thread on Reddit um, in the Appalachia sub, and it linked to this article and says, how many of you have a Melungeon bump on the back of your head? Well, I was totally intrigued, right? And I'm sure 99% of you, as soon as you heard about this, like reached behind your head, you're know, like feeling it. Um, I don't even feeling my head. I like don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but there's like this specific trait that seems to be typical of Melungeons. And that got me thinking, like, well, what other traits are typical? And of course, um, these are stereotypes, right? It doesn't mean everybody has them, but there's enough of a pattern that we can at least recognize the pattern there. And so I want to jump over to this. It says, are you part of the lost tribe of Appalachia? And weirdly enough on this, it says Archie Goins and family. I'm like, Goins is my family. I don't know how I'm connected to these folks, um, but it's just like really weird that I would literally have never known this and I'm excited. So I want to talk about the traits in here. And it says, one of the most fascinating genealogy stories to surface in the last decades is the enigmatic story of the Melungeons, sometimes called, called the Lost Tribe of Appalachia. The Melungeons are a people of mixed ethnicity who claim varying degrees of Portuguese, which I had a lot of, weirdly, on my test. Turkish also had that. Moorish, Arabic, Jewish, American Indian, African descent. I had all of that stuff on my mom's side. 
literally my mom had a bunch of Turkish show up and I was like, I don't know. I always was really shocked by that. Like it was enough that it showed up, I think as, I need to check the communities and see if I have the Melungeon community, I think. So I'm gonna check that later and let you know. But I wanna go down to this. Um, and it's interesting here, it even says that it's relate, there's a relation to the Creoles and the Red Bones. And it's like all these people, these tri-racial groups that kind of just became insulated communities. And it says, um, let's scroll down. Are you a Melungeon? So the hardest question for a genealogist to answer, it says, is the first and most obvious one. Am I a Melungeon? Um, and I think one of the problems with that is very similar to like, am I Creole? Well, most documents aren't saying like someone's Creole or someone's Melungeon. It seems to be much more of a, a cultural connection in a lot of ways, but there are physical characteristics according to this article. So Melungeon traits include dark hair and skin with light colored eyes, stark contrast in skin and hair color within a single family, um, which I, I think what they're saying is that some kids are coming out much, much darker. Some kids are coming out much, much lighter. There's not like this consistent, everybody looks very similar. American Indian features, a particular bump or ridge on the back of the head, usually just above the neck, known at, I think they must say, known as the Melungeon bump. Okay, I don't know if it's there. There is another one though. And I wanna jump over to this because this totally shocked me. Um, I actually had a dentist ask me about this and I didn't know what to say. So let me just, uh, okay, so there is, there are people on this sub talking about this and said so there's a little shelf on the back side of each of their front teeth and it's a melungeon trait. Um, they thought everyone had it. I had a dentist uh, probably like 12 years ago here in Nashville. I went to the dentist just for a regular cleanup and he stopped me and he, I had never like seen him before. It was my first time. And he was like, you've got shovel teeth. And I was like, does that mean I have a cavity? Like, I was like, what does that mean? Um, and he wasn't like super descriptive about it. He's like, no, you're just, your teeth aren't straight in the back. Like they're kind of, it almost like curves a little bit. It's a little concave. Um, and then there's like a little, like the bottom part of the tooth. It's almost like there's a ridge. It's almost like a little bit more of a bowl. And I mean, I never thought about it. Like I've never put my tongue on somebody else's teeth on the inside. Like, I don't know. Um, but this is something that keeps coming up as well as a melungeon trait. And so I'm really curious. I'm also guessing most of you are putting your tongue on your teeth to kind of feel. And it's weird because I, I asked my husband when I found out about it, I was like, do you have shovel teeth? And he's like, I, he's like, no. I was like, like, are your teeth, like when you, when you go to this, like, are they straight on the back? And he's like, his teeth are pretty much straight. And so I was pretty surprised. Um, I think they're sometimes called scooped teeth and they're also an Asian trait, which is interesting. Um, and this person is mentioning it too, because I, well, I think this kind of goes along with like our haplo group. So like my mom's haplo group, my grandmother's and the, the go inside of the family has a Native American haplo group. It's C1C. So it's indigenous to the Americas. And sometimes Native American ancestry gets confused with Asian ancestry because C1, I believe, is a Japanese haplo group, which is interesting. But C1C is Native American. Um, but this person was saying that they have the bump on the back of their head, they have the, sh the shovel teeth, copper colorings in my hair, which I have, um, especially if I'm in the sun, and so does my older daughter, where I feel like our hair, our hair is dark brown, but it almost turns like purple. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's very natural, but all of a sudden you see like a very coppery color come out, but it's not red hair. Unusually dark skin for a Caucasian. I don't think that I have that. I think I'm just, I'm regular, especially in the winter. Um, one of the last names, well, my family does have the Goins last name, American Indian features. I feel like those are kind of like, how do you decide that? But I think the, the, the head bump and the, the scooped teeth is super interesting. And so I'm really excited to delve into, uh, the Melungeon story. And I wonder how many folks out there don't realize they have like Melungeon ancestry. And so this family tree article says, what race is Melungeon? Well, it says the Melungeon's origins are still being debated. 
Um, some researchers believe they descend from the lost colony of Roanoke, Virginia, and ended up marrying into American Indian families. Others say Melungeons are descended from the legendary Welsh explorer, and there's there's all these other um, you know, guesses, because you have these tri-racial groups. Uh, escaped African-American enslaved people, maybe freed people. And so according to Family Search, there's some common Melungeon last names. So let me know if you have seen any of these in your family tree. Bowling or Bolin, Bunch, Chavez or Chavez. Uh, I always like seeing the Spanish names that get kind of changed. I've seen that a lot in my family where the original is very Spanish and then it turns into something that's totally different. Collins, Epps, Evans, Fields, Francisco, Gibson, G is that, I don't understand what the heck that is. Gilfrey? Gil, I don't know. Goins, that's my family. Goodman, Miner, uh, Mice, Moore, Mullins, Osborne, Phipps, Reeves, and then there's iterations of that. Ridley, Rodriguez, Stowers, uh, Vanover, Williams, and Wise. So I'm really excited to dive into this. I have a feeling that a lot of people have these connections and don't even know it. Um, and the word Melungeon, I was trying to research where does it come from. There's a lot of uh, different ideas. That's how most of this stuff works, right? People will say, well, it's from this. Well, it's from this. And um, we'll dive more into that, too, when we talk to some people who have Melungeon heritage that they've known about, which is very different than me. And I'm um, looking forward to the president of the Melungeon Heritage Association and kind of talking about that with her. So let me know... Um, what you would like to dive into with this. Uh, what questions do you have? I have a ton of questions. Um, what should I know? And I'm excited. I'm really excited to, to dive into this, this part of American history. Interesting to me to kind of differentiate when you have these tri-racial groups too, because I think we nobody would dispute like, okay, Puerto Rican is its own thing. Creole is its own thing. And I think a lot of that has to do with the language, you know, Puerto Ricans are speaking Spanish, um, a variation of Spanish in some in some places, and then you know Creole. They're speaking Creole, um, you know, kind of like French. Uh, and so I don't know as far as like Redbone Melungeon. Like for my family, it looks like um, you know late, the most recent language was Creole. Like my mom's grandmother, that was her first language. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm curious about that. Something I don't know. So let me know if you have that bump on the back of your head. I don't, I, maybe it's something where like, if you have it, you know, I feel like suddenly I have no idea what's going on. I'm just feeling weird bones. <laughs> um, but definitely I have the, the shovel teeth. Uh, and I feel like my dentist could have handled that a little bit more. Like, I don't know. It was like an awkward interaction, but I'm glad he said it because uh, it's something that I've always thought, I need to look into this a little bit more. I feel like weird pieces are starting to come together. So let me know what you think and we will, uh, we will talk soon.